Hello friends. Welcome to Grow with Afreen. We have prepared band 9 answers for Cambridge IELTS 18 speaking test 1. Remember that all the answers are a little bit longer because they contain more information and ideas. Don't be afraid, listen and develop your imagination. Oh, please subscribe to the channel for more contents. Now listen and learn. Good morning and welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Emma Watson. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. It has three parts. I will give instructions for each of the parts. I am recording this test for marking purposes. All right. This is candidate number nine, three, zero, six, six, seven, and the time is 11 o'clock. We are doing the exam in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And before we continue, can you please just show me your identification? Here is my passport, which I used to register for the exam, and you can take a look. Great, and what is your full name? My name is Afreen, and my family name is Yisman. You can call me Afreen. Okay, Afreen. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better, and a couple of questions on a general topic. All right. Do you work or study? I actually do both at this moment. I work for a financial institution as a financial strategist, and I also study IELTS and also GRE for my higher studies. What kinds of bills do you have to pay? Well, there are several utility bills that I have to pay every month such as water, gas and electricity bills. Additionally, I have to pay for subscription services such as a gym membership, newspaper and Netflix. Apart from that, I also have monthly payments for my phone and internet. How do you usually pay your bills in cash or by another method? Why? For some of the bills, I have set up an automatic credit in my online banking system. In recent years, this has been one of the popular ways to pay bills because this method is fast, easy, and secure. I also pay my bills through digital methods like banking cards, mobile wallets, and mobile payment apps rather than using cash. I love to use these methods because they allow me to track and manage my expenses easily. Have you ever forgotten to pay a bill? Why? Why not? Well, I did it once. As far as I remember, it was a bill for gym membership. I had just started a new job and I was struggling a bit with that. Therefore, I had very little time to attend to my personal affairs. Due to my busy schedule and an oversight on my part, I missed the payment deadline. Fortunately, I received an email from the company one week before the deadline indicating a late fee, which came to me as a surprise. Then, I contacted the manager, apologized for the delay, and promptly made the payment with the fine for the overdue amount and he waived the late fee. Is there anything you could do to make your bills cheaper? Why? Why not? It's a very important question. I think that there are plenty of simple measures I could take to make my bills cheaper, from turning off the lights to doing laundry the cost-efficient way. I could switch to lead lighting and motion detectors which would save me time, energy and money. Additionally, I could reduce water consumption by fixing leaks and being mindful of water usage. Lastly, if I am heating or cooking something small, I should use a smaller appliance like my microwave or toaster oven. An air fryer might be a good option. Moreover, I could adopt eco-friendly habits to make my bill cheaper. Okay, Afreen. At this stage of the test, I will give you a card with a topic. You will have to talk about the topic for one to two minutes. Don't worry if I stop you. You have one minute to think about what you are going to say. You can make some notes to help you if you wish. Here is the paper and pencil. Your one-minute preparation starts now. Describe some food or drink that you learned to prepare. You should say, what food or drink you learned to prepare, when and where you learned to prepare this, how did you learn to prepare for this, and explain how you felt about learning to prepare this food or drink. Your one-minute preparation is up. Would you start speaking now, please? Today, I would like to talk about one of the popular food dishes in Italy, which learn to make. The name of this food dish is spaghetti carbonara. When I was a student in Europe last year, I discovered this classic Italian pasta dish. To be honest, it was a culinary adventure and an immersive experience. I was fortunate to stay with an Italian student in a shared apartment. At the beginning of my student life abroad, I was struggling a bit to cook food. One day, my flatmate invited me into his kitchen and taught me the art of preparing delicious spaghetti. To prepare this dish, we needed some basic ingredients such as pasta, eggs, pecorino romano cheese, pancetta or guanciale, black pepper, and olive oil. 
I learned the traditional techniques and ingredients that make this dish so iconic. Although learning to prepare pasta carbonara was a wonderful and rewarding experience, it was challenging too. At first, I was nervous about getting the proportions and timing right, but with practice and proper guidance, I gradually gained confidence in my culinary skills. I remember the moment I took my first bite of my first try of the spaghetti carbonara. I was overjoyed, and I felt a sense of pride. The combination of the velvety egg sauce, Salty pancetta and nutty parmesan created a symphony of taste. After learning about the cooking methods from him, I have cooked this delicious dish many times. Overall, learning to prepare spaghetti carbonara in Europe was an unforgettable experience, and it deepened my appreciation for Italian cuisine and inspired me to explore more cooking adventures when I returned home. I always love to share this genuine Italian dish with my friends and family to impress. I look forward to continuing my exploration of new recipes and creating mouth-watering memories in the kitchen. Okay, Afreen, I am going to stop you here. Please turn over the notepaper and put it to the side. I am going to take back the card. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some questions regarding your part two response. All right. What kinds of things can children learn to cook? Well, I think that the most important thing that children can start learning to prepare is something that doesn't require sharp objects or heat. They can gradually move on to making toast, cooking grilled cheese, cooking eggs such as scrambled, fried, and hard or soft boiled, using the microwave to heat food, putting together a simple salad, and maxing together a variety of smoothies. Once they learn how to use proper utensils, they can expand their skills and tackle more complex recipes such as stir fries, pasta, homemade pizza and some other unique traditional dishes. Do you think it is important for children to learn to cook? Absolutely. I think it is important for kids to get into the kitchen and learn to cook. Cooking not only builds confidence and prepares a kid for difficult life situations, but it also teaches them to think on their feet. Besides, learning to cook helps children to learn about nutrition and healthy eating. On the other hand, cooking is a great way to learn life skills. This can be especially helpful when kids are on their own and won't have to rely on fast food and junk food to sustain themselves. Moreover, while cooking, kids can practice creativity and use their imagination. And children can learn to work together as a team, whether it is with a parent or with a sibling to get the job done. Do you think young people should learn to cook at home or school? Well, I believe that both options are beneficial. Learning to cook at home allows youngsters to learn in a relaxed environment. They would have opportunities to learn family recipes and traditions with their parents or siblings. So it could be a tasty journey of discovery. On the other hand, cooking classes at school would provide a structured learning environment, exposure to a variety of cuisines, and the chance to learn from professional chefs. As cooking teaches critical thinking, collaboration, and creativity, so a combination of both home and school learning would be ideal. How enjoyable do you think it would be to work as a professional chef? To be honest, I don't know that much about this profession. In general, I think that working as a professional chef can be enjoyable and challenging. This profession requires dedication, creativity, lots of skills and hard work. Sometimes it so happens that customers write negative reviews on social platforms and it potentially harms a chef's reputation. Besides, cooking is not only a job for a professional chef, he also does planning, budgeting, menu development, and marketing for the organization. So, I believe that if you have a genuine passion for cooking and you love to see people enjoying the dishes you've crafted with dedication, passion, and precision, then this profession can be rewarding. What skills does a person need to be a great chef? Well, to be a great chef you have to be very meticulous in everything you do, from the simplest to the most complex task. Culinary skills, communication skills, teamwork and leadership abilities, time management and organizational skills, creativity and appealing presentation skills are the most important to be a successful and famous chef in this modern world. Besides, a great chef should also have a passion for food, a willingness to learn and innovate, and a dedication to creating high-quality and mouth-watering dishes. How much influence do celebrity or TV chefs have on what ordinary people cook? It's a very important question. Let me think about it. First of all, I would say celebrity. And TV chefs have a massive influence on what ordinary people cook. 
Nowadays, most of the world's biggest chefs have published cookbooks, sharing their secrets, tips, and recipes in one handy source. For many, tradition still prevails when sourcing recipes and these books are the first port of call. In their cooking shows, they always come up with new and unique recipes, easy cooking techniques and tips, step-by-step -step guidance, and flavor combinations that inspire people to replicate their cuisines at home. It seems to me that they are like the rock stars of the culinary world. So, they influence ordinary people significantly to try new recipes and make cooking more accessible and exciting. Thank you. This is the end of your speaking test. Thank you very much. Follow these tips to get a good band in IELTS speaking test. 1. When you talk, you should only look at your notes briefly. Don't read directly from your notes. 2. Don't be afraid to disagree with the opinions the examiner expresses. 3. It is important to have your own opinion to current issues. There is no problem if you provide any false information. 4. If you run out of ideas after one minute, give yourself a fresh start by looking at the task in the booklet again. 5. It's important to listen carefully to the examiner's questions so that you can answer in the correct tense. 6. When you answer yes, no questions, please answer the questions first and then give reasons for your answer. Don't simply answer yes or no. 7. Make good eye contact with the examiner from the moment you enter the room and answer in a polite and friendly way. Your body language plays an important role in communication. 8. Make sure that you arrive 45 minutes before your test so that you are not hurrying and have time to relax. If possible, please visit the test center before the day of your test so that you are familiar with where you need to go. The speaking test is a natural conversation. If you try to give a prepared speech, the examiner will interrupt you and ask you a different question. So try to be natural all the time. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel.